removing the president. And Butzer says, you mean impeachment? They go, no, we're going to just remove him. It's about to happen the next few months, and everybody needs to get behind it so there's not a civil war. While they call for the civil war and violence everywhere, then I get in contact with some of my sources in D.C. yesterday, and, of course, a few weeks ago we had the pastor on who met with Trump, Pastor Brown, a top evangelical, at the big prayer meeting two weeks ago, and then he was in a congressional meeting all day, and top congressmen told him they're shopping martial law and the removal of the president, the killing of the president. And he's confirmed now, talking to the congressman again, it's the killing. The Secret Service visited him and said, who's the congressman? And he said to the Secret Service, it's all over the news. It's Al Gore. It's, it's Brennan. They're all saying they're going to remove the president. They're in major publications saying, kill him. They're saying, hashtag hunt Republicans, top Democrat strategists. They're funding cop killer groups. And CNN says when a cop gets randomly shot, well, cops better be good people and they'll stop getting shot in the back. I'm not just a pure defender of the police. When they do something wrong, I'm a, I'll speak out, but I don't just randomly say, go kill cops because some other cop might have done something in another state. That's crazy. So they're trying to bring this country into anarchy so they can turn us into another Venezuela or North Korea. And Roger Stone, I, I talked to Roger Stone last night. He contacted me I, uh, via text. I contacted him back. And he said, this is seven days in May, which, of course, is a famous 1960s film with Kurt Douglas and Burt Lancaster, it's excellent, dealing with generals in an attempted coup. And we see the Democrats, Limbaugh talked about it last week, are, are shopping to generals a coup against Trump. So I talked to him at length, and, I, and w w since this morning, we've been mulling what we can get into here on air. Because I have my sources in the Pentagon, my sources in Congress, my sources in the judiciary, my sources in Army Special Operations, all telling me the same thing. Then I talk to him, and he's telling me even more important information that that is congruent with this from very high-level sources. And, in, you know, a lot of times we sit on info and never release it because we don't want to give up sources. But at a certain point when the president's being isolated ahead of a coup and being treated like he's a child, it's treasonous. Now, no sooner had I hung the phone up last night that one of the things we discussed popped up on Politico. Because they never hold back what they know. And it's Kelly. Kelly cracks down on West Wing back channels to Trump. The new White House chief of staff is making its first priority to gain control of the information that gets to the president. By the way, Anthony Cumia hosts the show every two weeks as his own great compound media. He has given us the first 30 minutes today. I'll be popping in towards the end of this 30 minutes. Uh, but, but he was happy to give us his time. This is the only time we can get Roger on, so I appreciate Anthony Cumia riding shotgun with us and the great work he does. So he'll be popping in. We'll go a little bit longer than 30 minutes if we need to. But, but that's the facts here. And then Kelly's reportedly quoted saying, yeah, you know, Trump believes whatever he's first given, like he thought he was being wiretapped by Obama, which he never was. They were all over the newspapers saying they were wiretapping him. They were on CNN saying they were doing it. Then when Trump said that's illegal, they went, we never said that. So they quote things that Trump's doing that Trump's supposedly wrong about that are admittedly true. Then they've got McMaster firing people that say globalism is allied with Islam to flood our borders when the UN admits that. So Trump is the real deal, but he's drawing from the swamp to drain the swamp, kind of like Treasure Island. You go out to get a ship to take you to find treasure. The problem is the pirates know before you what you're doing. They are the folks showing up to, to help you crew the ship. So it's Treasure Island. You got a few people in the White House that are good guys. Everybody else is led by Long John Silver. Now, who is the Long John Silver now that Priebus and now that others are gone? We're going to talk about that with Roger Stone and see how much he'll tell you. We're skipping this break coming up because there may not even be a show soon, folks. They have this coup of Trump. They're coming after everybody else. And at that point, we have no choice but to defend the Republic because they're not going to give us quarter. They want to extinguish the Republic forever. Roger Stone, thank you for joining us. The most important transmission ever so far. I'm sure they'll just get more intense in the weeks and days to come, but we are on the razor's edge. Please break it down. Well, Alex, uh, like you, I had a sleepless night. Um, as you know, Donald Trump ran for president as a non-interventionist. Uh, when his generals, Mattis, uh, Kelly, 
and McMaster's re recommended 150,000 ground troops for Syria on the tail end of what many believe was a false flag uh, use of chemical weapons uh, in Syria, allegedly by Assad, uh, uh, Assad pardon me. Uh, and what I think has happened here in the effort to oust Priebus uh, and Spicer and the established Republicans who were essentially junior leaguers to the deep state, uh, we've had, in essence, what I think is a soft coup in progress. Now, uh, the reason I say this is because uh, a source at the very highest level of the administration tells me that Kelly seeks to choke off all communications between the president uh, and his associates, friends, uh, and many supporters. Uh, that secondarily, uh, that the generals, Kelly, McMaster, and Mattis have agreed that uh, no two of them will be out of town at the same time. In other words, uh, like the president needs to be babysat. And quite incredibly, that any military order given by the president must have the unanimous notification and approval of the three generals. That borders on the treasonous. At a minimum, it is the usurpation of civilian control of government that was vested in Donald Trump. Donald Trump does not need to be babysat. He is not incontinent. He has won the greatest election victory, perhaps, in American history. Well, plus, and the he law says he's the commander-in-chief. The law says those generals will execute his orders. So the fact that they're openly... What's crazy is everything we talked about last night was not in the news. By this morning, a lot of it was starting to already come out, which shows how we've got to start going on air the minute we learn this stuff. Well, uh, look, there is, as you know, some precedence for this. General Alexander Haig and uh, the Defense Secretary James Schlesinger uh, essentially had a pact that any military order given by President Richard Nixon in the closing days of his administration would have to be approved by them. They were also usurping... Uh, and key words, authority. at the final days of Nixon, they're behaving yeah. like this is the. these are the things you do, cutting off the info, removing the powers. They're already rendering him uh, gelded, at least they're trying. They're already cutting off his appendages uh, ahead of the big event. Well, uh, let me go one step further, Alex, and that is, um, while it is true that Priebus ran too loose a ship, I'm not suggesting that anybody should be able to get through to the president, uh, but I do think that he cannot be cut off from some of his most trusted aides and supporters. Uh, and the president is a naturally inquisitive chief executive. During the campaign, he would pick up the phone and call individual state directors to check on how the campaign was going. But uh, you will recall that H.R. Bob Haldeman and his sidekick, John Ehrlichman, very carefully isolated Nixon pre-Watergate, uh, to the point that cabinet members could not get through on the And they used the paranoia about leakers to get him to actually do the things they finally removed him with. Uh, that is absolutely the case. That isolation, I think, led to Watergate. In other words, there is a happy medium. The door should just not be open and nobody, anybody wanders into the Oval Office who feels like it, as it was under Mr. Priebus. Uh, but on the other hand, the, Kelly, the generals seek uh, to totally control information. Well, flow. Roger, I think obviously somebody needs to know this. I don't know how much we can say, but let's uh, stop me if you need to. But the president calls people, has hour-long conversations with them, says send the data here. And then the data via, via email, via phone, is literally misdirected somewhere else. And then you confirm, someone confirms the president, that this is indeed his number that he's gotten, but that they have used the NSA to hijack it. And then we have Kelly in the middle of it saying he's going to cut people off from the president. Now, I mean, I really think the information you've got is too dangerous to not to go ahead and release. I, I'm just telling you, well, my, my I, spider sense says we need to release it. Well, Alex, let me say this. Everything I have, you have said, I have heard to be anecdotally true. More than one person has told me uh, that they were instructed to send things to the president, but that they could not get the uh, information to him. Uh, but here, more importantly, are the things specifically that the president has not been briefed on. 
Uh, he has not been briefed on the super secret FISA court decision of November that absolutely proves that uh, the Obama administration uh, was surveilling tens of thousands of Americans for political purposes, something Mr. Brennan and Mr. Clapper and Ms. Rice and, yes, Obama are up to their knees in. So this is Watergate squared to infinity. But the good news is I hear Trump has been briefed now. Uh, well, let's hope that is the case. Let me go on. The president was is not been briefed on the case against Sheriff Joe Arpaio, has not been told about the egregious misconduct of the Justice Department under Barack Obama in that case. The president has not been briefed about the secret grand jury currently uh, assessing whether they can cook up an indictment against the journalist Julian Assange. The president has not been briefed on the plan of Jeff Sessions uh, and Chris Christie with the support of General Kelly to crack down on medicinal marijuana in the states. I worked for Donald Trump for 40 years. I know that hell is to be paid when he is not told uh, the, the necessary information or when information you give him is incomplete. He likes to know everything before he makes decisions. As I've said many times on this show, my experience is when he has all the information, he almost always makes the right decision. Well, let me stop you, Roger. That's my next point. You read the political article and others. They say they're getting this from Kelly. This is basically a leak uh, where the president believes whatever he's given, which is not true, and so he's got to restrict it as a gatekeeper. They're openly acting like the president's addled. And again, they give the example, the president believed the news he was given from Breitbart, uh, that's in a direct attack on Bannon, that Obama was spying on his campaign. Obama's people went on TV during the campaign and said it. They said it when he was president-elect. They said it 22 times in the New York Times in the month of January. We've shown the actual newspapers, and, and they just said they have communiques of Sessions talking to Russians last week. So they're saying he's crazy because he believed Breitbart. They, he's now the president. He knows he was spied on. He knows what the FBI was doing. He knows all this. So, again, they're playing these games. What is Kelly doing? Or is this, or, or are they lying? Because we have the intel this is going on, these cutting folks off. But Politico, again, has him criticizing the president. I guess the president isn't seeing this, and that's why they don't want him having access to the Internet. All he's got, Sean Hannity now, let's just say it, a few people he talks to on the phone, like you occasionally, and... Sean Hannity, who he religiously watches. That's why Sean Hannity, after Trump, is one of the most important people in America now because he gets it, he understands it, and Trump watches him. So we've all got to lobby Hannity and Lou Dobbs to keep hammering the truth of the planned coup. Because, again, we, we just sit here calmly with all these people on TV, Brennan, Gore, saying they're about to overthrow Trump, that they're shopping it to generals. We have the generals cutting Trump's access off. I mean, this is textbook preparation for coup. This is indeed uh, a crude version of seven days in May. Alex, let me stress a couple things. That uh, that the FISA uh, document not being revealed to the president is shielding the deep state. The last thing the generals want is to see the indictment of uh, Brennan, Rogers, Rice, Rhodes, uh, presumably Jarrett and Obama et al. So they're covering for their deep state brethren. Uh, they're, uh, I, I believe now that Steve Bannon has assisted the generals in taking power and played, uh, sadly, an instrumental role in the ousting of Anthony Scaramucci. I suspect the generals will find Steve's nationalist and non-interventionist views problematic. Uh, and my guess is that it's only a matter of time before the generals move on him, too. I was about to say, that's my next piece. Policy-wise, Bannon's done a good job with Trump, and Trump's done what he said he'd do. But is that Trump or is that Bannon or is that a mix? That's my question. Obviously, Trump's very proud that he's been delivering. It's, it's Trump. He likes Bannon because he echoes his own common sense, Americana, populist, nationalist, free market views. But, but, but separately, then, who is the Long John Silver? Who's the leader, or is it a group still vying? It appears to me it's McMaster who is purging people who are anti-globalist, anti-open border to Islam. It appears more and more McMaster is some type of uh, Soros bot. I mean, he, 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 he appears to have the, the Soros stamp. 
Well, but Alex, the other thing I'd tell you is that um, General Kelly uh, brought with him from Homeland Security a woman named um, Kristen Nielsen. Kristen Nielsen's role at Homeland Security was ensuring that no one who was loyal and worked for Donald Trump or his election was hired. She was a never Trumper to the bitter end. She's now going over as deputy uh, White House chief of staff, where she will presumably play the same role. This is a Trump White House staff with no Trumpers. So what we see happening is, handful. what we see happening is, they've got some mild flip floppers like Priebus and Spicer playing both sides, weak people, but still articulate and, and decent in some ways. Then we get a Scaramucci, hardcore patriot. They magnify his few mistakes, spoof him, emails, calls, where he's trying to really take action. Trump ejects him under pressure. And then we get real deep staters taking control. What was done to Scaramucci is really extraordinary. Despite the fact that he uh, took and passed, as is mandatory, two drug tests before going to work at the White House, the rumor was spread that he was a drug user. He's never used drugs in his they life. They do that to me because I have energy. They say Trump's on drugs because he has energy. Uh, if lies were told about his personal life, lies were told uh, connecting him in romantic relationships that did not exist. This uh, He was followed uh, by government agents. Uh, this was a classic deep state takedown. What was Scaramucci's sin? He's not a deep stater. He's committed to the Trump agenda, not the general's agenda. Uh, and um, I'm uh, confident that his greatest days of public service may yet be ahead of him. He knows how to make money. The sale of his, country, of his company will be done shortly, and he'll be awash in hundreds of millions of dollars. Uh, but what we have here is a slow-motion deep state coup. They will block any move on Comey or Mueller. Uh, they will isolate the president so he doesn't see the blade coming. They will slow motion walk him into the 18 election. They're going to wrap the Republican uh, Congress around his neck when, frankly, the president can very easily rebound by starting to challenge establishment Republicans in primaries. The president wants to send a shot hurled around the world, go to Alabama and get Jeff Sessions' Senate seat for a Trump supporter, someone who pledges to support the president to the bitter end, not... Mitch McConnell's establishment Republican candidate, Luther Strange. That's right. Let me that paraphrase. That shot heard around the world. I agree. Let me paraphrase here. Winston Churchill. Men and women are not generally made by even overall who they are, but by the times they live in and then responding and, and, and meeting that measure or surpassing it. We are seeing open globalist war against everything basic and honest. We're seeing the most radical elements of Islam pouring in. We're seeing attacks on the family. We're seeing attacks on our stock market, attacks on our economy. It's so clear. We're seeing open calls to kill our president, to arrest us, to shut down the free press, total censorship coming into play. I want the audience to understand, I don't have words to describe the epic, over-the-top battle we're in and the fact that we're winning when we fight. So how would you characterize this historic moment we're in, Roger Stone? Uh, it's really clear, Alex. The president has everything at hand to save himself. He has uh, the skills, the cunning, the information in the FISA court warrant, uh, the powerful issue of building the wall, and, and what is already booming as an economy. They hope to lull him to sleep before he realizes that he can destroy, still destroy the deep state and lead in the direction that he delineated in the election. It's wow, let's come in.